Hello and welcome to the C++ Insights YouTube channel. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a C++ trainer offering classes worldwide, on-site or remote. This is my YouTube channel where I use my tool C++ Insights to teach you various topics related to C++. Like this content? Your company can hire me to teach a C++ class with even more details answering your questions. Feel free to reach out. So you might be well aware that we have the year 25, so it might be time to talk about features of the latest C++ standard being C++23, right? And today I like to take the opportunity to show you one improvement that came in with 23 that I think will change how you write C++ code in a couple of places a lot. The motivation here is this class template called array. It's modeling a std array as you know it from the standard library. So even if you like this type, I haven't never seen it, uh, please use the standard library version. This is just me using some vehicle to show you the changes that are possible. A std array, you know that it takes a type parameter and a non-type parameter, and then we create an array out of that, saying it's of type T and the size that we provided with the non-type template parameter. This is very boring stuff implementing all that because the next thing is we need the member function data. Of course, the const and non-const version. We need the member function size, luckily only the const version. We need begin, we need end. Oh, of course, and we need the begin and end in the const version. And we need an array index operator once again in the const and non-const version. I really cannot yawn enough how boring it is to implement that. I personally think the only thing you can do here is you can mess it up, right? At least if I have to write this, well, there will be some bug I introduce on the first round, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And if it's mixing up the index, something like that. Not much to win. Um, in the end, of course, it's a simple yeah, class, so we will all manage to get it right, let's say, in the second round. Here are a few use cases. They are not that interesting for this example. What I like to focus on is all the duplications that we have to do. So end here, it's totally the same in the const and non-const version. And of course, the same is true for begin and, and for data. But we have to duplicate all this code for the const and non-const versions. My class here, that one requires 16 lines of code, including two lines for the include and a blank line. So reducing it to 14 lines of code with a lot of repetition. Can we do better? Because repetition is, well, it, it makes maintaining our code simply harder and it has the risk of introducing bugs. So maybe the non-const version of begin is correct, but the const version of begin isn't. So C23 introduced something that's called deducing this as a popular name or the explicit object parameter. Now let me translate the example we have here into C23 syntax. So in C23, I can say I still have this struct array. It takes a type name T and a size. It forms the main part of this class, the, the array. So this is just a wrapper around a bracket plus C array. And now here we have it. I have the member function data. And the syntax for the deducing this or the explicit object parameter is that we say this and then auto ref or ref ref or const ref, whatever you want here, whatever is the correct thing to do. And I let it return self.mdata. So this is the difference now. In the previous version, I'm switching back here. You know that, right? I simply say mdata. I'm not a big fan of, of using the this pointer here. You know it, right? I can also say this. If I would do this, the syntax in 23 would be more similar. But yeah, for me, it's noise. In C++23 with the explicit object parameter, there's no way around that. Because now we have to say this is our previously implicit this parameter that now becomes explicit. So this is why it's called the explicit object parameter. And I like to say that on this object, I want to access mData and return that one. And they do this for all the subsequent functions. So for begin, I say this auto ref returns self the data. For end, return self data plus size. And for the array index operator, well, return 
I call that one this time S just to show you it does not have to be named self. It's it's not like an Objective C where self has a real meaning. It's just a name that seems reasonable here because this is already taken. So, but you can also use a shorter name. The member function size here totally stays out of all that because it is a function that's always returning the same value. I think I could also make it static to get rid of the this pointer after all. And now we have a couple of usages here below as we had it previously, but I think the most interesting part here for now is that I could reduce the duplications. In my very simple example here, I had 14 lines of C++ code in my formatting, and now I have 15 minus two, that means I have 13 lines here. So I saved the double data and the double begin and end and because I separated them differently. I have not the best line count difference here, but I think you can see no duplications and that's a great thing. Now, if you want to look behind the scenes, so let's transform that one and here we have the result. So what you can see and you might already have guessed that since C++20, we can have auto as a function parameter type. We call that one an appropriated function template. And we use the same syntax here. So we say if this is auto, then my number function here becomes a function template itself. It has a type template parameter, I'm calling that one self. Let's go to an instantiation. Here we have an instantiation of array of int for two. And you can see here I have the function, the member function data. And that one takes as a first parameter a const array int of two by reference. This is myself. And then I say data on that one. I have a, another one. And that one is for the non-const version. The only difference, well, array isn't const. So this is the usual way. Previously, the this pointer would have been const in the first member function and not const in the second. Now I have a reference with that exact type where I can name it, you can say differently than this, in my case, self. And this is the same for all the member functions. The crucial part I want to teach you here is that if you use the explicit object parameter or the using this, you create a function template here and the compiler that uses it to const or non-const of this data type. You could do a couple of more things so that this here is required to make all the rest happen. And you could be specific with your type here. You can, as I said, change that one to an R value reference or make it const in the beginning, which might defeat the purpose a little. But having an R value or L value reference has its own benefits. Maybe I'm doing another episode about that one. Today I wanted only to show you that you can look behind the scenes with C++ insights even for the explicit object parameter. And it's a great thing. So in C++23, I really think that we can appreciate the new syntax here and the reduction of the duplications we had to do previously. And so I'm happily looking forward for future C++23 classes. I can teach and show the new syntax. I hope you learned something today and you're eagerly looking forward to using C++23. Maybe you already do. In any case, enjoy C++ and have a great day. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.